welcome back everybody so in this series of videos I'm going to show you how you can take one of these old trucks that's been sitting for a long time and turn it into a reliable working truck with the most the bare minimum amount of money not the most money that's opposite of what I'm trying to do bare minimum amount of money so what we have here is a very last of these OBS GMT 400 Chevys GMC this is a 2000 K3500. It's got a big block, 4L80, and it's been worked pretty hard. This one had been sitting for 12 years, and then I got in exchange for some work I did on a car or truck. I don't remember what it was. It was something, but they brought it to me to get it running. I got it running for them and did some other work, and they're like, well, you can just have the truck. So here I have the title, the truck. And I'm gonna see if I can make a good working truck out of it for, for almost nothing. So I already started out, put some cheap paint on the rims, got us some used tires. Not the best, but you know, it'll get us down the road. We'll need to replace a mirror on it. It's a little bit on the rough side, but it runs. Doesn't run good, we gotta fix some things, but we're gonna go through it step by step. Got the fender falling off. So right now you'll notice, maybe, got some old tires on the inside that aren't quite as tall as these, but I just did that to get it home. We'll go through and change that. Got some fancy mud flaps because we'll, we'll just start there. Maybe so some miracle, it'll be happy it got something fancy and start running, right? It's having an identity crisis. Chevy on the back, GMC on the front. Either the tailgate or the bed or some part of this truck was local to here. I did get plates on it, so it's insured and registered and everything. Original exhaust, I always like to see that. It does have some battle scars. Looks like someone did a burnout. I, I can't imagine who would do a burnout in a dually. So yeah, I mean, it's clean. There's no rust on this truck. You can tell it's a local Texas truck. We've got the alley cat back again. What's up, princess? So, Dirty has... What's she doing? Oh, she's playing with the reflection. <laughs> anyway, it's got the half-eaten cupcake. It's got a fifth wheel plate. It's got some coolant in there. That's never a good sign. We got some O'Reilly's budget clearance oil. Front license plate bracket that doesn't fit this. And if you see the muffler clamp, you see some tell tell signs of what you're about to see. Door pins too. Don't don't add to the list. Oh hey, <laughs> I forgot he was in here. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this thing's pretty beat. But believe it or not, as ugly as it looks, everything works on it except for the AC. Apparently that. Nope. So needs a headliner, needs a deep cleaning. But surprisingly, you know, windows roll up and down, the locks work. Real quick, I don't know. I guess at one point the window didn't work, so they did the duct tape express. It's a fully loaded model, or it was back in its day. I don't know if you get any more like leather or not on these very first one I've had. It's got the radio delete someone did. They tried, my understanding is someone tried to steal it and they cut a bunch of wires. Well, they ended up cutting the VAT system, so I had to go in there and fix that to get it to run. Someone took a truck that ran they could have stolen to where they couldn't steal it at all. Um, did you get your favorite part? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about it. I don't know what to say about it. I guess it goes with the mud flaps. <laughs> we got the redneck look going on. So it's got a power mirror. You could probably use a windshield and some windshield wipers. Probably needs another mirror. You want out? Uh, he'll come out when he's ready. So, like I said, Big block power. Make sure the cat didn't get squashed. 
Got a 454 and L29. This is, I think, the last year in these trucks. And then the 3500 HD, I think, got an 8.1. I don't remember for sure. It's always good to see the insulation there. Usually that's first thing to go. Um, you'll see in the next clip when we're driving at home and some of the stuff that we found wrong with it. You ready? Mm-hmm. Been here for a while. Got vaulted. Nice. It's got oil pressure. It's got what? 60 pounds, 65. It's got gas. I did put five gallons in when we went and did the burnout in front of the house. You mean the burnout you didn't do? No, oh, yeah, I didn't do the burnout. I don't know, it goes 5,500 RPM. I need to get rid of this. I'll show that there somewhere. There we go, we don't need that today. Yeah, so somebody, I guess they tried to pull the column out or they tried to steal the truck. And there's a bunch of wires under here that they cut, which is how I ended up with the truck in the first place. You can see too, the radio. I don't know what they were doing. So when I got it, I needed, I had to reprogram the vats and then I couldn't get it to start because someone has stolen the fuel filter off it. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Uh -huh. So fixed all that, we got it running, then it sat here. And then probably, I don't even know if it was six months ago, it was a few months ago. We took it out, see how good it ran once I got the title for it and that's been sitting here since. Got the tack going. So we'll pull it up by the shop. We're at my buddy's house. We're going to take the ladder rack off, hook up the computer because I don't think these gauges read right. And then we're going to see if it'll make it home. It's got a bit of a lope to it. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> None of that works. I'm sure some stolen on it. <clears throat> really all there though. Papers. Paperwork. It was last registered in 2011. So yeah, let's go get the ladder rack off and we'll go hit the road. Okie dokie. All right, right in voyage, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if it has all the gears. I think it does. It's got a pretty bad miss. Do you feel it? Oh, uh, no, not at all. No. I like the windshield. It's like a road map of, you know, I know, you could darn near plan out Route 66 across that thing. Yeah, this one. Mm hmm I live over there on that crack. You live over on this crack. I live over here. In the, yep. Where there's no other cracks. Mm-hmm. It says we're doing 65. I disagree. I really doubt that. There's no driveline noise. Bed sounds loose. Are we gonna rip a fender off? The what? Are we gonna rip a fender off? It's alright, I don't know. <laughs> oh, they've got a lot of torque running on seven cylinders. But we're not going that fast. Just FYI. Mm hmm. See, that's why I brought the laptop so I could hook up and wash the vitals, but someone didn't charge it, so I guess we're just gonna. That. <laughs> I can smell it heating up too. I don't know if that's good or bad. I think it's the heater. Oh yeah, it is blowing some stuff through. Just from driving through. Yep. Smells like my IROC. Yeah, I remember the 
South Cover Leak. And I hear some injector stick, but otherwise it looks alright. You know what we forgot, right? Fire extinguisher. Ah. I think we got like 20 more miles. I don't like the fact it's blowing coolant out. Yeah, that's not good. But it's not running hot, so I don't know. And this probably doesn't have an air bubble near the sensor, right? It's old enough to where they probably wouldn't have done that stupid engineering. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't smell hot. It doesn't run hot. We'll find out. Yep. If it's anything like that stuff I worked around, like in those buses, it'll probably run 300 degrees and not give a crap. I've seen them do that. <laughs> I saw a 24 valve Cummins do it, and I saw a 427 do that. They ran it without coolant. And it wasn't until someone actually noticed that the heater wasn't working that, oh yeah, it was out of coolant. That's terrible. That's how those school districts work. Their freeway entrances are so weird. They're Texas style. Yeah, y'all are weird. <laughs> so I don't know if the vibration's the miss in the engine. Or the tires, or, or both. Or the tires, or what it is. Also, keep an eye out for parts coming flying out of the bed. Yeah, smoke. Because you have like a dash panel back there that's plastic. Oh, oh you're right, huh? Well, the cruise control works. Steer oh, look at that. We're going 85. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, where's my phone? Um, right here. Oh, man. I want to win this. Do you? I want to win. Oh, look. Oh. Can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right on, 68. Screw it. We have water in Texas. Well, oh, you haven't been downstate. No. Downstate, it's all water. For a New Please. Mexican, any water is like, whoa. This is like desert country up here. It ain't desert. Prairie. It doesn't ever rain. Yeah. As you can tell by everything's dead. Usually it's more dead. It's but we had winter. No, oh, it looks like this in the middle of summer. Mm. It'll rain just enough to like tease it where it'll grow and then die. Hmm. I guess we'll, we'll just keep driving and see if anything happens. We'll just build that. We're not dead yet. I mean, dead yet. It's still running. Looks like I made it. So, some observations. You go up a hill and it shakes pretty bad, so I know it's got a dead miss in it. Either injector or spark or who knows. But other than that, I mean. Oh, and it did burn some fuel, but it's a big block, so what do you expect? And we have a pretty, probably 30 mile an hour crosswind, pretty bad one. I guess the lights don't work because people are waiting for me to go buy them, even though my signal light's on, so I guess those are bad. Steering's kind of sloppy, but this thing rides like a Cadillac for, you know, being a one ton. So, I guess the next step is we'll kind of figure out what that miss is and kind of go over the truck and see what we actually have. We know it runs and drives, so we'll go see if we can find any history on it, if it's got new parts or leaks or anything like that. Because like I said, I know nothing about this truck. This is a common failure point on these. And I misdiagnosed it, as you can tell by this uh, radiator cap. So where the fan was blowing the coolant, it looked like it was coming out of this overflow over here. And I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I wasn't thinking, but what it actually was, pinhole leak, shooting coolant up, and where it ended up was over in this area. And uh, for some reason, I thought it was a head gasket or something, but luckily it's not. Looks like it's had new wires. It's got a new water pump. 
new alternator. So someone put some money into it. Compressors locked down, but that's usually most of them. New hoses. So I think at one point they're trying to get this thing on the road, and I think maybe the the pass lock, the VAT system stopped them. I don't know. It does have some oil leaks. It does have a dead miss, but we'll cover that in the next video. Like I said, we're going to go step by step. I'm going to show you how to get one of these going with the least amount of money and have something reliable. So we'll go underneath the truck and I'll show you the good stuff that I found. Ready? You ready to go crawling, off-roading? Where's the cat? Oh, there he is. Come on. We're underneath the truck now. As you can tell, this thing is totally rust-free. This has to be a local truck. So you can tell we got some oil leaks going on. Maybe some coolant leaks. I'm not sure what we have going on there. It looks like... Well, I don't know. It's on there. So something I noticed is this transmission has been replaced at one point in time. That's a huge plus because these aren't cheap. I'm sure someone will say, well, my buddy down the road can do it for $200, but this thing's going to be towing a 30-foot gooseneck, and hopefully the guy for $200 didn't replace that transmission or fix it. Uh, did you grab the exhaust over there? Yeah. We got some grade A workmanship on that exhaust. So I'm assuming somebody cut the exhaust off at one point. And I don't know if you can get over here. So it's got a combination of weld and metal putty holding the pipe on. And it goes to some really half-assed, um, what do you call that, flex tubing, which then transitions to the factory exhaust with some, but going back to the flex pipe, you got some probably grade F, third grader welding and a clamp that doesn't match. But other than that, I mean, this thing seems pretty solid. I don't see any leaks from the transmission or the transfer case. I'm going to guess that we have a heater core leak and go in by this. Because that doesn't really feel like oil, but I can't really tell. It does have a coolant smell to it. I know the front end's got some worn out parts, but again, I'll show you how to fix that on a budget. Normally that'd be like seven or $800 in parts. But I got a, what do they call it, a hack? I got a hack for that. The cat, Princess, didn't see anything wrong, I don't think, did she? Mm -mm. Hey, Princess, you see anything wrong? Anything wrong back there? No. Nope. Uh, They're all inspecting. Yeah, they are inspecting. But yeah, I mean, this thing seems really solid. It's got 411 gears, in case you're wondering. So, yep. So that's it. In the next video, I'm going to show you, we're going to get this thing running good. Because currently it's running on seven cylinders and it gets nine miles per gallon. And yeah, I know it's a big block, but you know, when I did the, the pass lock, I did some other tweaks to that ECM, so it should be getting better. So stick around, guys. Next video, I'll show you we're going to fix the, the dead miss in it. So today, I'm going to show you what it takes to get one of these old trucks working reliably and on the road again for the least amount of money. Not out breaking the bank. What? <laughs> Where? Okay, start over again. So, after getting off the ground, getting all cleaned up, <laughs> happened to see this real classy repair on the mirror. Figured we couldn't let that go. Had to show that. So, yeah, anyway, guys, stick around for the next video. And I'll show you, we'll start at the engine and work our way back on the truck and make this thing as reliable as can be.